All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mike Gaida, and my project is called Towards a Privacy Preserving Neural Network. And I'm working with my advisor, Professor Andre Lepetz. Um, I'd like to begin by asking you what Facebook, Equifax, and Target all have in common. And it's the fact that in the last three years, they've had major data breaches that you might have heard about. Um, and what informs this rise of data breaches? Well, it's the rise of big data. The idea that we're creating more and more data about ourselves, about our government, about organizations than ever before. And what, is, what has allowed that is a fall in data storage prices. So it used to be um, that the 16 gigabytes of memory, most likely in your pocket right now on your phone, um, would have cost um, $16 million back in 1980. And now that's a, a few dollars and it sits in your pocket at all times. So with this fall in the price to store data, we can create a lot more data than ever before. You can see the data volumes um, on the internet increasing seemingly exponentially as we go on in time. And on the web, we have an, a saying that if you're not paying for a service, you're the product. Specifically, your data is the product. And we've um, been trained by free models like Facebook and Google and YouTube to give away some degree of our data to use free services. And so that got me to think about, what if there was a way to protect this data? And this is um, where secure multi-party computation, or MPC, comes into play. And this is a theoretical construct um, around the idea that aggregate data may be computed and released while preserving the confidentiality of each party's internal data. And so what does this actually mean? I like to give this example. Um, if we have four parties, parties A, B, C, and D, and they come in to do a computation, and we know the answer is 100. So can you tell me what um, parties A, B, C, and D put into the equation to get 100? Um, you can come up with some possibilities, but there are over 176,000 possible combinations of A, B, and C, and D, which allows for us to preserve the privacy. And so MPC has um, existed in computer science literature for more than 35 years, but only recently performance improvements have made it um, more available to be deployed on a wider scale. And one such deployment was a Boston University study of the gender wage gap in the greater Boston area. And this is particularly well suited for MPC because um, average salaries for men and women are really just sums divided by the total number of men and women in the city. And this data is something that perhaps companies don't want to release to the public. They don't want um, it to be shown that they're paying their men more than their women, obviously. Um, but for society as a whole, for the um, Boston's government, it's really important to see where we stand. And so MPC enables applications like these, where data that in the past should not, that would not be released otherwise can be released. And so just changing context a little bit, um, I'd like to, uh, think about the second part of my keystone, the neural network aspect. It's a really vibrant area of computer science, um, and it's a, another theoretical construct that we can teach computers um, to do a task at near human level. And so an example of this that you may have in, um, interacted with is the classification of images, perhaps on your phone or on Facebook, um, where you get you know, those alerts where you have like 100 cat photos um, of your cat, really cute cat photos. Um, and this is done um, by teaching, um, by giving a computer access to a very large amount of cat photos or dog photos and teaching it just like you teach a human to categorize things. And this, um, the theoretical setup for a neural network is this series of layers. And the reason it's called a neural network is because it's loosely modeled on, the, on how we understand neurons work in the brain. And so if you look here, the dots, uh, we call them nodes, but you can think of them, you can think of them as neurons. Uh, they receive an input, a stimulus, and they output in the brain, they would be neurotransmitters. Here they're ones and zeros, because we're in computer land. Um, and they pass them on to subsequent nodes. And at each node, um, there's a large addition, basically, that happens there, and it passes on an impulse to the next layer, and finally to an output. Um, and so these nodes uh, receive inputs the, from the arrows. Those arrows are weighted. Um, so like in the brain, certain, um, certain pathways might 
produce a bigger response. Um, certain pathways might produce a bigger response, like I'm showing here. Um, and we can train that in the training um, portion of a neural network setup um, by, like I was saying, showing it big data. And so over time, the neural network learns these weights and makes, makes certain pathways more important um, to teach it, you know, oh, these are your cute calf photos. Um, this is how it works. Um, unfortunately, neural networks usually operate directly on data. And so there's no inherent privacy preserving technique. Um, so if, you know, Russian hackers have access to your neural network and you're uploading all of your cat and dog photos, they might be able to read them because you're directly inputting um, your data into the network. And so I began to think about how can we um, protect this data. And the first approach, um, I'm going to talk about two approaches. The first one is called PCA, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But it's the idea that we can protect the data before it hits the actual network. Um, and the second approach is protecting the network itself. And so that's replacing um, the insecure network with secure functions. And so we end up with, a, in the future, a network that will look like this, completely protected. And so how did we do this? Um, it started um, with a framework called GIF. Um, and it's a JavaScript framework that was written here at BU uh, that enables us to replace traditional computer functions like pluses and multiplications with the secure versions of them. So it's kind of like a drop-in replacement for what you would normally use um, to enable applications like neural networks and, MP and um, PCA. And so the first part of my project was um, extending GIF to work on negative numbers and on rational numbers, which I needed to enable the applications I was looking for. And so the first um, approach, the PCA approach, reduces the dimensional dimensionality of the data set. And so the example that I give is if you start off with uh, data 1010 and after PCA you have 11, uh, the privacy preserving approach is that if you only saw 11, there's no way to go back to 1010. And I'm not going to go fully into the math um, of this, but if you look here on steps two and three, there's a computation of a mean and a sum. And that is just like the Boston Workforce study where you're adding up a whole bunch of data and then dividing it to find the mean or just taking a sum. And so I implemented this um, first in JavaScript in the non-secure approach and then dropped in GIF support to compute um, these shared means and shared sums, uh, thus preserving the privacy. And there's now a demo on GitHub that you can go and look at for PCA working in an MPC environment. Um, the second portion was um, actually doing the neural network. And so I started off with a really simple um, neural network for counting. And this is binary counting, uh, three-digit binary counting. So the first line is uh, the binary representation of zero, and then it counts to one. And as we go on, one to two, two to three, three to four. Um, for humans, this is kind of easy to figure out. If I give you two, you can tell me three is the next number. Um, but for computers, um, you can't, I taught them to do this. Um, so I didn't program it to count up by just one each time. I said, here's 60,000 um, instances where I counted up by one, can you learn from it? And so with a 93% accuracy, um, we're able to have a computer that counts up. And this is a simple, a demo just for demo purposes to show that this would actually work. And so I did this um, using a library called TensorFlow. It's not terribly important, um, but it's Google's kind of industry standard neural network um, framework to achieve this 93% accuracy. And then I brought this to GIF. And so that is where I added in the privacy, replaced all of the non-private operations with privacy preserving techniques. And uh, today there's a demo again on GitHub um, where a user can submit the number four, it'll talk to a server somewhere on the internet, and it'll get back the number five. And this works in eight minutes. And so this is both um, a result and a challenge, because you can see eight minutes is a really long time to wait to get back that number. Um, but we're very hopeful that because GIF is a newer framework, um, there are a lot of improvements that can be made to speed this up. Um, you know, if this was categorizing your cat photo, you wouldn't want to wait eight minutes for that. Uh, we're hopeful to bring that down into industry standards 
um, in the future. But we think that this um, project really points to the fact that you know, if a small research team can do this, why aren't the big companies that we've given all our data to doing it? Um, we should demand that the data that we're giving up, um, either we're giving it up freely and we know that we're giving it up freely, or the companies protect it really well. And I hope that at the end of this presentation, if you take away anything, it's that you know, you've given up a lot of data um, and it's time to try and take it back. I would like to just thank my mentor and KHC, and if you have any questions. Um, so with the use of secure data, you have a lot more opportunity to do research, like in the example you gave. What happens when, so I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of negativity against using data and like turning people into statistics. So how do you kind of deal with that sort of uh, backlash? Well, I think MPC is um, well suited for this issue uh, because it only releases aggregates. So even though you are counting the person and giving in their data, uh, you're never releasing information about an individual person. And so we only see population statistics at the end, which I think is a good way to, to avoid those issues of, oh, this person is just a number. It's more this population has these characteristics that we've been able to find out under MPC. Yep, GIF uh, is an MPC framework. Okay, thank you.